What's up, everybody? My name is Jay Waz, and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5, and we're in the Hot Wheels expansion pack. In this video, you can probably guess what we'll be doing, aside from crashing over the place just like that. We're going to be taking every, or at least most, Hot Wheels cars, and we're going to try to make a drift build out of them. This will likely be one of the last drift videos I make. I can't count the variety of different videos I made in terms of drifting. I do plan on have I do have more ideas, but I'm gonna hold off and to actually do something else in this game because I've been so fixated on that. Bro, we have so many Hot Wheels cars. I've already had a lot before I had this expansion, but now we got a lot more, and I'm definitely looking forward to messing with a bunch of these, especially this thing. This thing has probably the most power, and I'm willing to bet it'll make it an insane drift car. So I'm gonna start with a twin mill. Yeah, nine six nine got it. I think it's got two V8s in it. Which is just overkill. I also gotta give a shout out to my co-worker or my friend. He's definitely my friend. He's got an absurd amount of money in this game. And I put it, I had a car in an auction house. And I didn't think he was going to go actually do it. But he bought the car. And as a result, I now have 20 million in-game credits. So, dude, thanks for that, honestly. Alright, fully modded up. We weigh just about 4,000 pounds. And we have damn near 2,000 horsepower. You remember when I said that Corvette was probably the most powerful car? No, I'm definitely wrong. I did not know this thing could have that much power. With still being an S1 class, that's a little absurd. Alright, I actually made my drift tune a little bit different for this one because of the amount of power. So it's not fully, like, 100% rear wheel bias. There's a little bit to the front, but not much. And there are actually drift zones. If you don't have this expansion, there are drift zones in this game. Like this one over here, this one right here. And I'm not going to say these drift zones are easy. They're absolutely pain to do. I, I don't... I don't know what they were doing when they made this drift zone, but there's so many straightaways. It's just, it's difficult to actually keep it sideways for that long. I think the one I am definitely going to try is this one. This one seems to have the most curve out of everything besides, uh, I think it's, no, it's not that one. Uh, where is it? This one. But that one looks like the most entertaining one to do. Uh, I get uh, the highest score on that one out of everything with the 777 Corvette, as you can imagine. I actually fully expect this one to do very well just because of the absurd amount of power. Okay, I forgot about the uphill part. Ah, oh, crap. I, I probably should have done the other, the other way. See, the biggest thing about these drift zones is that it's a little bit disorienting because you're getting tilted, you're going sideways in the areas. It's a little confusing to do at times. Alright, we got 232,000 with that. I'm gonna try it the other way Because I'm not sure that when the the way I just came from it's not the best way to do this go about this so I'm gonna give the other way a shot. Okay, neither direction is good, but I did get a higher score going this way 244,000 is a score for the twin mill Next one I'm gonna try is the Metropolitan Custom. I think that's how you say that. I've already got a drift build out of this. This one makes 1,356 horsepower, weighs only 2,200 pounds. And the thing is, I don't think you can actually make the tires any wider. So that's why I have them all narrow. And uh, it's probably gonna be terrifying to drift around, but you know what? Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's just do it and see how it does. I'm probably gonna crash like crazy. Okay, it's not too bad. At least it doesn't feel that bad. It's doing quite well right here. 252,000. That's a new high score. I suppose I'm not really all too surprised to beat the score. I've only had this DLC for a few days now. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm expected to get even higher scores if I repeatedly try to thrift zones over and over again. Alright, next one I'm gonna try is the F5 Dually Custom Hot Rod. Now, this thing has, like, I think it has torque for days. But I can't remember what edge of swaps it has. This would be the first time I messed with it in this game. In Forza Horizon 4, it did have a very torquey motor. I'm not sure about this one though. Okay, there it is. It does have the torquey motor. 6.7 liter V8 turbo diesel. With a thousand foot pound of torque. With only half of that for horsepower. Uh, the other ones don't have that much of torque. I don't know how much power they might make. But I think the one I'm going to try first is... I'll try this one first, see how that does. Alright, this puts out 1,356 horsepower, 1,021 foot-pound of torque. Now, just because I have had good experience with that motor, I'm going to use that. But the um, very torquey motor is the one I've always had trouble with. I remember in Forza Horizon 4, I didn't do very well with drifting, regardless of the fact that I had just that much more torque. And I don't know why, it just feels like it would do better. Alright, we weigh less than 4,000 pounds, so we get about the same weight as the twin mill. I mean, I can't really be surprised. It's got four wheels in the back. Same power as the last car is the Nash. And just because the tires on the rear are so freaking massive, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to make this rear wheel bias all the way, 100%. Now, in Forza Horizon 4, this wasn't that good of a drift vehicle. 
Now, it could be different because they did do, in fact, they did, in fact, change the physics of this game recently. I remember noticing that. So let's see how it does in this one. I mean, it's not doing horrible, but it's also not doing that great. Oh, yeah, this one didn't do that good. 227,000. Right now, is this, this one is in last place. This is going to be the next one I messed with, a 2-Jet C. Now, I actually did make a video dedicated to it to see if they uh, made any changes to it compared to Forza Horizon 4. And it did seem like they nerfed it. Because it's got a lot of power and weighs basically nothing. But it didn't really go that fast. The top speed was like capped at around 250. And uh, it just felt limited compared to how it used to be. I know in Forza Horizon 4, it was very loose, if that makes sense. It was very hard to control when driving it. So maybe that's why they nerfed it. Because it, it, they want to make it at least drivable when it's fully maxed out. I do believe I actually did drift this in that video as well. Okay, we weigh a little, little, little bit less because I put slimmer tires on it. That way we can lose traction a little better. But that's the only change I made. It makes 1300 horsepower with the stock motor. There are no engine swaps. Now because this car is so light, I made it 95% rear bias and only 5% in the front. So that way, hopefully, it'll be a little easier to control. Not saying that it will be, but I can't imagine a car that weighs less than 2,000 pounds to be an easy control drift car. You know, I was wrong. It's actually surprisingly very controllable. Yeah, look at that. That's not bad at all. Almost made it through without smacking into a wall. Almost. All right, not quite last, but might as well be, because it's not even going to be mentioned by, by the end of this video. 228,000. The next one we're doing is Bats in a Blade. This car is like the cover car of the Hot Wheels expansion pack. And there's a good reason for that. You can have it on regular street tires and it was still, no actually correction, drift tires. I had it on drift tires and it still had 10 out of 10 handling. That's what it's on right now, right? And it's got, uh, yep, 10 handling. The only thing the drift tires did was reduce the acceleration. That's it. So, trying to make a drift build out of this is definitely going to be a challenge, and I am definitely looking forward to that. Alright, we have 1100 horsepower, and the biggest problem about this one is how much less torque we have. We don't even have a thousand foot pound of torque. So, this is definitely going to be a challenge, and this is also the first ever drift build that I have ever made that is X class. That is absolutely absurd, absurd to me. Now, just because of how it is as a car, I'm making a 100% rear wheel bias. I don't actually expect this to do good. I think I'm <laughs> gonna have a lot of trouble whipping out the back end of this car. Yeah, yeah, this thing constantly wants to straighten itself out. I have to keep pulling the e-brake to make it not straighten out. It tied with the freaking 2 Jet C. It, it freaking tied. I was really hoping this would be the one that won, but no. Next car, the Bone Shaker. This one is... I think it was OP in Forza Horizon 4, wasn't it? Like it was a little, basically a car that was a cheat and they, they disabled it as a, what do you call it, a rival's car or something like that? Because it was basically cheating with how good this thing was, which you would have never expected that just by the way it looked, but yeah, we were definitely wrong. That's freaking absurd, 455 in the rear. <laughs> Holy crap, that's like Car Mechanic Simulator, turn on oversized tires kind of hack. All right, this one already had a fully built motor in it. I had it on slicks, which suggests I was trying to race it. It had 2.1 lower cheese, which actually isn't that bad. It weighs a little less because I put narrow tires on it. Yeah, yeah, that's about, yeah, that's really not much modifications I made aside from all the drift diff and suspension and stuff like that. Now, because of the unusually fat tires, it's going to be 100% to the rear. Oh my god, this thing is loose. Very loud, too. I don't know what I was expecting, but it certainly wasn't this. It's handling itself quite well, actually. Oh, that's so disappointing. It felt so good, but I only got 219,000. You know what? I'm still doing that two attempt thing, so I'm gonna go again, but from the other way, see how it does. No, I can't. I gotta be fair. I gotta be fair. Damn it, I really want to do it again. I don't know why I made this a one attempt thing. It was 219,000, right? Either way, it's still in last. The next car on this list is also a very no well known Hot Wheels car. I remember this one in Forza Horizon 4 because of the absurd traction it had for a Mustang. And I'm definitely willing to, looking forward to see how well it does in here as a drift car. Hello? I was going to have an accident with one of your drivers. Which one? The Hyundai Elantra. Oh, that's Andrew. Of course you did. He's an idiot. Oh, that was my brother. He was calling about one of my co-workers driving like an idiot, which is not news to me. He's He's got issues. Bro, 
Oh yeah, this is gonna be a monster drift car with this edge and swap. Holy crap! I did not know this thing had that. That's absolutely absurd. I'm keeping those 1552 wheels on them. I love 1552 wheels. See the ones in the front are actually the ones I plan on putting on my real car. They're gonna be 17 by seven and a half. They're uh, they cost about 332 dollars per rim. That's without a tire, so that's gonna be a long time before I can get that. All right, weigh a little more, and we have 1500 horsepower, which is probably why we weigh a little more. And somehow we're S2 class, even with less letter G's and all that crap. But then again, we just added 1500 horsepower, which is literally a thousand horsepower more. <laughs> so that is that. All right, it's all like my heart. That's 102,000 credits. Holy crap. Look, man, it would be an absolute crime if I didn't use this paint job, all right? Oh my god, this is easily one of the best ones I've used so far. It's surprisingly easy to control, even with all that power. We. We got 255,000! Is that not a high score? It is a high new high score! We just beat our high score again! With the Mustang! It's nice to see a Mustang at the top for once. Every time I use the Mustang in my previous videos, they just... ...fall flat on their face. And yes, the last Hot Wheels we'll be testing is this thing! Which I remember having as a kid, so it's really cool to see this. I won't be testing any of the off-road ones simply because they are, well, as stated, off-road vehicles. They're probably not going to be good for that purpose. Could be wrong either way, but we're not going to do that just because they are off-roading vehicles. Ah, I love this thing. It looks so crazy. This is like the 90s Hot Wheel, isn't it? I, this car is like a freaking legend in my book. It's actually the first time I'm going to the customize, customize, blah, 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 customize customization menu to see what it has for edges and stuff like that. There's no way it can't have a giant. It has a giant one. Yeah, we're doing it. This is going to be an expensive tune as well. Okay, the ride hire actually does lower for quite a bit. Tucks in those wheels quite nicely, actually. Weight reduction takes off a thousand pounds. That's insane. There are no roll cage options, but I'm not surprised. I think the damn thing is a roll cage. 1500 horsepower will weigh less than 4,000 pounds and 1.7 allergies. It says it's going up, but it's exactly the same. So it's Probably negligible difference. Not because of the, I guess you could say the, say the wheelbase of the car. I'm going to make it 100% rear wheel bias. I'm wondering if this one has two different paint jobs or not. Oh, it's got different colors. I didn't know that. That is so cool. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm going with that. It looks nothing like the layout on the thing over there, but I'm going with that. Oh, you can't tint the windows. That's just disappointing. I'm probably very wrong about the year this was released, considering I'm just noticing that radio. Has a little XM logo next to it. So it has XM radio. I don't know how long it's been out. I never really looked it up before because I don't use it, but I, I'm probably wrong about when this was released. I don't really expect this one to do all kinds of crazy she is. I really don't. I mean, it's a cool looking car, but wait a minute. How the hell do you get out of this thing? I just realized that. I'll find out in a second, I guess. Okay, so this motor in particular is just best for Hot Wheels drift zones. Okay, 237,000. It didn't win. But it's definitely the most interesting one of the bunch. Alright, first place was the Mustang, and last place was the Bone Shaker. I'm actually disappointed about the Bone Shaker, because I actually thought that it was going to do better. Because it felt so controllable, but that might have been the problem for all we know. Now, let's see how the hell do we open this door. Damn it, there's no explode button. I can't just- oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that's not it. That's not what I was trying to- that's not what I was trying to do! God damn it, I hit the space bar by accident. Alright, let's see. <laughs> that's freaking awesome, dude. That's like, that's futuristic as hell right there. I love that. Does that say five axle at the bottom? Is there five axles on this thing? What? Bro, that is cool as hell. I didn't know I had that. This, this thing has two fire extinguishers. It's like you fully expect this thing to catch on fire or something. Look at that fat supercharger. Hold on. Yeah, that's a great view of the engine. Uh, I appreciate that view. There we go. That supercharger is massive, dude. That is all the time I got for this video, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please, for the love of God, hit that like button. And maybe just slide a little sideways into it. If you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.